Hi, I'm Charles with Annie Cat. The story begins on a rainy day with our protagonist named Ray at a funeral. He has a horrific memory of those around him dying and ice emerging from his body. People nearby could clearly see this burst of power and wondered if he was overheating. Sometime later, we see Ray again as he enters his new academy and saves a girl from falling down. A couple girls nearby gossip about how they heard a new student would be arriving late that day and how he descends from neither aristocrat nor sorcerer but is born of an ordinary family. Everyone frowns upon this fact and the girl he saved is disgusted to have touched an ordinary. Ray is then called by name by a boy called Albert who explains that only nobles and descendants of sorcerers are allowed to attend his school. It's no place for ordinaries like Ray. Ray states that there are many things he wants to learn from the academy and Albert attempts to fight him. However, their interaction is broken up by a girl named Amelia who is a member of one of the top three noble families. Albert still refuses to accept Ray and leaves, but Amelia gladly introduces herself to our protagonist. She points out how Ray is the first ordinary to ever attend the academy and that means he must have really impressed someone with his talent. At the entrance ceremony, it is explained that the Arnold Academy of Sorcery is among the finest schools in the world and everyone there has been acknowledged for their talents as sorcerers. The speaker asks that they not be prideful though and tells them to continue working hard to improve themselves. Many sorcerers with innate talent and the perfect environment eventually lose heart and let their abilities waste away. She instructs them to work hard instead and become first-rate sorcerers. This speaker introduces herself as Principal Abby and thanks everyone for being there. The incoming class representative is Amelia and she explains that this is only their starting point. Later, students whisper gossip about how everyone is talking about Ray as he is introduced as the last student to join the class. He tells everyone that he knows how strange it is for an ordinary to attend their school, but explains that he intends to put forth his best effort as a sorcerer. His speech is met with a mixed reaction and the instructor Miss Gray asks that he introduce himself to the students individually sometime later. Amelia wishes him luck and everyone is shocked that one of the top three families is interested in him. Albert is exceptionally upset, but Ray pays him no mind. Instead, he has a memory of a destroyed town but snaps out of it when he must stop a piece of chalk from hitting him. Miss Gray asks that he pay attention and goes on to explain sorcerer ranks. She calls on Rose who states that there are five ranks, bronze, silver, gold, platinum, and grand, the rank regarded as sacred. Only seven grand sorcerers exist at any one time. These seven are those that have mastered the very essence of sorcery and are the pinnacle of sorcery that all sorcerers strive to match. The existence of these seven greatest sorcerers is shrouded in mystery and only a few details are known by the public. One of them is actually Principal Abby, who is known as the Blaze Sorcerer. Next is the Spellbinding Sorcerer Carol, who is a researcher and the most well known of the Seven Grand. Finally, there is one known as the Hero of the Far East War, the Iceblade Sorcerer. The Iceblade Sorcerer is the one who vanished after bringing an end to the Far East War. There is no more information at all about the rest of the seven greatest sorcerers. Miss Gray points out that the end goal for all her students should be to become the rank of Grand Sorcerer, one of the Great Seven. Albert stands up to point out how ridiculous that is since one of the students in class is an ordinary and it would be impossible for him to achieve that goal. The other students agree, but Miss Gray explains that everyone attending the school has passed the mandated exam, as well as an in-person interview. Their background means nothing and they all have earned their place there. Afterwards, Miss Gray has them practice the basics of sorcery, explaining that it's important for everyone, and the seven greatest sorcerers are no exception. She then calls on Amelia to explain that sorcery refers to the art of reconstructing prima materia, the primary building block of matter in their world. Miss Gray demonstrates how you must first encode prima materia, or in other words, turn it into code. Any excess must then be removed by decoding, then the data is put back in order and moved to the processing stage. Data can be added or removed in this stage and at the end, everything is manifested. Those are the basics and she goes on to say that anything they make can be erased. Furthermore, there are no limits on things reconstructed by prima materia. It all depends on the sorcerer's own capability. Sorcery is primarily the art of creating matter and it can be separated into four categories. Liquids, solids, gases, and plasma. Anything other than those four is classified as a phenomenon. A student then wonders if Miss Gray used antimaterial code to erase the ice flower from earlier, 
but the instructor explains that it wasn't and there is no sorcerer who uses anti-material code. It is then time for some practice and Amelia demonstrates her abilities as she creates an ice flower of her own. Of course everyone is impressed with her but turn to watch Ray as he seems to struggle. Everyone just mocks him but Albert takes it a step further as he is enraged by Ray. He is a noble and refuses to acknowledge the existence of a talentless withered wizard. Afterwards, Ray walks through the halls and admires the building's construction. He spots the girl who asked about antimatter earlier walk into a room and follows her to find that she is doing more research on the subject. She introduces herself as Alyssa and later explains that a Dr. Ainsworth is her role model. Ray is familiar with the doctor's research on the advanced subject she spoke of in class and Alyssa states that she wants to be just like her. Alyssa is surprised to hear that Ray knows about her and he states he loves Dr. Ainsworth from the bottom of his heart. Alyssa gets excited as she has never met another fan of hers before but apologizes for getting carried away. Ray then asks why she covers herself when she has such beautiful hair and she asks if he thinks her ears are weird. Ray realizes that she is a half elf and explains that he thinks her ears are lovely. She has been made fun of all her life but Ray tells her that she is beautiful. She is very flattered by his words and Alyssa points out how mature he seems. It's like he isn't the same age as her at all and he reveals that he gets that a lot. The two part ways and Ray goes to see someone named Evie Armstrong. Evie has been waiting for his new roommate and Ray thanks him for the invitation. Evie states that he couldn't care less about Ray being an ordinary and only really cares about how much muscle mass he has. Later, Ray goes for a run and apologizes when he runs past the girl. He is surprised to hear that the girl already knows who he is and she explains it's because he is the Academy's first ordinary. She states that Ray is becoming very famous for this and introduces herself as Rebecca. When Ray tells Evie about his encounter, he reveals that Rebecca belongs to one of the top three noble families. Ray is completely oblivious since he grew up on the countryside and knows nothing about nobility. Evie explains that the top three noble families are just as powerful as the royal family and influence everything in the country. Amelia is part of one as well and Evie explains that she has spotless integrity, high morals, and first-rate sorcerer skills. Ray heads off to see the instructor who asked to see him and runs into a girl who accuses him of being careless. Ray doesn't believe himself to be at fault but apologizes anyway and the girl recognizes him as the ordinary. The girl is glad to hear Ray compliment her pigtails and she introduces herself as the girl of transcendent raging cuteness, Clarice Cleveland. She is disappointed to hear that Ray has never heard of her family name, but another compliment quickly wins her over again. She must rush off though as she is in a hurry and Ray meets with Principal Abby. He greets her as the colonel but she stops him and reminds him that they have both retired from the service. She asks to just be called Abby and the two have a laugh as they remember their shared past. Afterwards, Ray and Albert are set to spar using wooden swords and the instructor explains that he will stop them if it looks like things are getting too dangerous. Students watching prepare to watch Ray get beat up as they mockingly call him the Withered Wizard. Evie introduces himself to Amelia and explains that Albert was the one that gave him the insulting nickname. Ray's new friends worry about his safety as Albert thinks about how disgusted he is by someone who can't even use sorcery. The fight begins as Albert proclaims that Ray has no right to stand on the same level as him but Ray easily avoids Albert's attack. Everyone is amazed and Albert tries another attack. However, with one slight movement, Ray destroys Albert's sword. Principal Abby watches and is glad to see him enjoying the student life and refers to him as Ray White, the Ice Blade Sorcerer. Thanks for watching part 1, all other parts will be in a pinned comment below.